Hi, welcome to Coffee Talk Tuesday. I'm Shalise Stevens, and I'm here with my enchanting co-host, Trip Mitchell. Enchanting. By the way, it's Thursday. <laughs> How can we do Coffee Talk Tuesday on Thursday? Wow. Why, way to blow our cover. Because well, everybody I mean, I think... knows that we only film on Tuesdays. I, I really I don't think, think that... You know, and we have a studio audience. We have the most handsome young gentleman here. We, we do. And it really is very cute. But I want to talk Valentine. After we introduce our guest, I want to talk Valentine's Day. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> because this is the world's stupidest holiday. Every man thinks so. And here's how we change the dynamic. Have a reward for men who do well, not just a penalty. Oh, Okay. We're going to introduce Lisa first. Okay, then we'll get into that. But Lisa, and she has strong opinions on the subject. Very strong. I appreciate it. All right, well, we are with Lisa Hall. She is our amazing artist friend. She does all our graphic design. She's done our logo, which we are actually having a logo reveal today. This is our new logo that we're having. So we're going to put it up on the screen right there. How'd you do that? <laughs> the logo? Yeah. Uh, just an illustrator. Okay. How do you, how do you come up with the, I mean, how do you come up with the inspiration to do cool stuff? Uh, I just do, I draw several sketches of just ideas that are floating around and then I'll just send her the sketches and let her pick one that looks good. And then I'll decide if that's the one we go with or not. <laughs> like I sent her a, a couple ideas and she had one picked out but we were kind of in a time crunch so i went with this one instead well you did an amazing job she actually has Thank one you. that a picture at some point she has of drawings of our faces it's pretty fun your face both of our faces oh my your god face and my face it's gonna be fantastic but that's later that's well, just gonna be that would that's, be a very that's gonna be your valentine next year okay <laughs> So let me explain why Valentine's. For every man out there, there's only a penalty. So if a man screws up, if a man does perfect, then he finishes the day in the same position he was the day before. There's nothing good that can come out of it. Can we do something about that? Could you do something great for your husband, boyfriend, whatever, if he does a great job? Yes. Like maybe not bother I him for a week? <laughs> how would wow. that be wow not how would that be <laughs> not how would that be no let me ask you this how would it be if we didn't have to expect nice things like once every so often because the guy just actually did as much as we did and could match our effort in the oh, relationship you are <laughs> insane men <laughs> men put tons of effort into the relationship we think we take out the garbage. Sometimes. We, that's about it. But we do a great <laughs> job of taking out the garbage. When it's overflowing and you can't shut the little thing anymore or, or anything. And so then you're like, well, I guess Have I you should ever, take that out. I, always, I broke the new garbage thing because oh, we've got a drawer that pulls out with the garbage cans that's one for recycle okay mm -hmm. and i was put my foot in there to crush it down oh, so i wouldn't have to take it out <laughs> and i broke the thing and then had to sneak because <laughs> you know that would have required so much effort to you know bag it up and to walk outside i mean right. and it's cold <laughs> during the summer i'm much better at garbage right. but so we do other things Okay. I'm, I'm going to come up with something. I, I'm waiting. <laughs> Why do you guys like us? I, that's a really, really good question. You know, actually, I I like being alone, actually. <laughs> it's purely biological. <laughs> oh, so we, all we are are donors? <laughs> you know, I mean, I, w I would like to have more than that. You would point. like to have more donors than one? No, more. <laughs> <laughs> or more than just a donor. How would you feel about having two or three husbands? Oh, gosh, no. Well, actually, maybe. You could get that garbage maybe, taken out three right, times a week. Right. But there would be a lot more garbage, though. <laughs> Unless I could just rotate, you know, and be like, you're this person for me. You're this person for me. You're this person for me. And then maybe with three men, I can get an actual, like. A, a composite? If a, you could have a, a. Yeah, like the perfect man, but it takes three to get there. Well, I, I disagree. Okay. I think it takes five. <laughs> but <laughs> it is kind of funny. I uh, Hold on one second. Should we just have him on the show? Yeah, let's have him on the show. Come on <laughs> over here, buddy. Come here. 
<laughs> Hi there. I'm trying to like tell him to sit down without like yelling in people's microphones. Okay, we're okay. There we go. What do you have to say about life? <laughs> <laughs> He what are your cute. opinions on romance? <laughs> oh. Okay. Like, <laughs> Good to see you, buddy. Okay. So, All you know, right. All right. Hey, Gabe, go ahead and sit down and put your headphones on, okay? We'll edit this. No, we, uh, okay. uh, we're in put good shape. The headphones are back down. on. Okay. How old okay. is he? 14, 15? Almost. <laughs> uh, he'll be three on Tuesday. He is a very handsome young man. <laughs> How many kids yeah. do you have? He's the only one. Okay, are you thinking about eight, nine, ten, twelve more? <laughs> we are in Utah. I do have pressure from the uh, Utah Society to have at least eight, so I think we'll probably go with, like, one. Okay. That, <laughs> much more responsible for the environment. But, it is, you know, one thing about the indigenous culture is that they do a great job of having multiple kids in terms of my sister was a mess with three kids. I mean, they were totally disorganized. They killed their neighbor early on and i'm serious about that wow <laughs> well it was more her husband at the time he would never cut the lawn and the kids would go over to the neighbor's house and pull up plants and flowers and really horrible kids and the neighbor used to finally it was over on creek road and he used to cut their lawn just because it made the whole neighborhood look so bad and then he died one day of a heart attack cutting their lawn oh, oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> but my sister was horrible with kids but you go to the store and you see families with seven eight kids and they're all polite they do the right things they don't you know how is that how do how are your kids oh my kids are kids i mean they're my it depends if we're talking about my daughter or my son like my daughter she's pretty good like she actually um is in the regionals for her stem project that she did on blowing bubbles bubblegum bubbles and she made it to her district competition wow and how old is she she'll be 12 next month hey very cool how mm -hmm. about your son my son he just turned eight and he is my little wild boy and god bless him <laughs> god bless he him. is a complete i don't mean to stereotype but he is a complete boy everything you think a boy is he is that is wonderful yeah. And Dave Barry, the humor columnist, talks about if a, a group of eight-year-old girls were on an island without any adults, in one day they would have everything organized, they'd be working in total team teamwork, and if eight-year-old boys were on the island, they'd be fighting over one rock. And it's just kind of a <laughs> it's just kind of a difference between boys and girls. And boys don't start out superior. We just work towards that. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> it's been proven time and time again. I've only been married twice. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> we won't. Yeah. Anyway. How were they? Um. Well, actually, my ex-husband is going to be on our show next week. Wow. Yeah. So when does he get fun. out? <laughs> <laughs> is it parole? Or? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, we talked about him the, the, a couple of shows ago about the acting and everything. Yeah, he's an acting teacher. And he was like, you're not going to like remember the Jesse James I was in or anything else. So we... You can't leave in the middle of the show. I know. I've got to get him from <laughs> breaking your microphone. <laughs> okay. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to hear about Shalisa's marriage one, two, and possibly three. We'll be right back. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome back. We've got the children under control. Good job. Good Thank job, you. Mom. That's a good job, Mom moment, because we don't get enough credit as moms to the little <laughs> things that we have to do, like, you know, just keep our kids quiet for like... Well, she gave them three Benadryls. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I mean, I don't think she gets that much credit for it. I mean, My, my main concern is... As long as he's not breaking expensive equipment, he's fine. And yeah. then we, we found out where <laughs> I bought some of the equipment in here on a high tech, um, very expensive website, Wish. <laughs> 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 and, and the primary slogan is Wish This Stuff Worked. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we were talking about your marriages. Oh, so, I know. We should probably talk to Lisa, though, about. Because we're going to talk to my ex next week. I just said our next guest next week is going to be my ex-husband, David Stevens. And 
He, the David Stevens? The David Stevens. The one who was in Jesse James? Yes. I've See, seen his Kennedy. IMDb. He, he did. was did you Jesse really look James. Him up? No, you just told me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was he, a History Channel documentary. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. What did he get paid for that? It. I don't know these things. Probably Scale? at least like four or five bucks. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, it, it was it was it was cool that and he's done like I said he's done a lot but he's going to be on the show to talk about himself but we're going to talk about Lisa now. Lisa, tell us about yourself. Hi, I'm Lisa. <laughs> so aside from doing great art, what do you do? And have great kid. <laughs> yeah, I I mostly I uh, I used to work with Shalise. That's how we met. We worked at IHG together, um, and I worked there for a while. But I was trying to do art full time so eventually I quit there and it's nice because I can work from home and still keep an eye on him and that's why he's here with me because he um goes with me everywhere <laughs> oh one we've got a presidential race coming up and one of the things that's never talked about is helping mothers out with child care that is something that no candidates talked about that's something that it's a good point it, it makes a working so you're you're in a family. You've got both people have to work, but childcare is such such an important topic, and it makes life so miserable for young families. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it, what are things that you would like to hear from a presidential candidate that could help you? Well, I know uh, actually Elizabeth Warren has talked a lot about having like a government funded childcare program, or at least like rebates and things like that. So I know. I don't know a lot about it, but I know that she has talked about it. I find um, her shrill. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I don't listen to her as much. I mean, Bernie and, and Elizabeth say a lot of the same things. They do. And I find him shrill as well. Yeah. <laughs> In a... Uh, old... A Larry Sanders yeah. <laughs> sort of way where he just kind of yells at you. Yeah. But at least, so she is addressing some things along those lines. Of... Yeah, she has. So I, I, I respect that. I thought for sure that working from home with a kid would be much easier than it is um she's a first-time parent (laughs) (laughs) and it's not that easy it is not no i end up doing most of my work in the evenings and uh we try to you know he's not he's not a rambunctious kid we really looked out he's he's got a ton of energy but he's He's never had a bunch of issues with, like, throwing fits or screaming. We're super lucky. He's been a great kid so far, but he still requires a lot of attention. So while I do get some work done during the day, it's definitely something that he requires a lot of attention. And as far as what can be done for moms who are working with kids... um, Because daycare is pretty expensive, isn't it? It's so expensive. That's another thing, too. I was thinking... It's like a house payment. Exactly. Yeah. I we I I I started freelancing and things were a little rough. We had a big a rough patch during that time, but we figured out still that even if I were to go back to my old job, the cost of daycare would make mm-hmm. the difference in the money that we were making completely negligible. So there was yeah, no and that's point a in tough me. Situation. Yeah, to go work forty, put up with all that aggravation just to pay yeah. for daycare. Yeah, just that's go through all the hassle would be of for. leaving for work a half an hour early. I think yeah. for the kids, however, the right daycare probably is pretty enriching, I would guess. I would say so. I, I try to make sure that we, like, luckily, since I do, like, art and things like that, I, I draw on an iPad so I can take it with me anywhere. So I can take him to the library and to social programs and things like that, and that's super beneficial for him. I know a lot of parents, like, especially people who are taking phone calls or things like that at home. Oh, which can't are a do lot of that. mothers. Yeah, do yeah. that because they're work JetBlue Airlines has a lot of people mm-hmm. working from home and that's Definitely. Sort of thing. Yeah, and it's really hard. Yeah, it seems like the perfect job to work from home, take care of your kids, but a lot of them are tied to their computer and their kids are still still unsupervised, unsupervised and... at home, which can be incredibly frustrating. I I know I've known several moms who who deal with that and you know, they still want to watch their kids they're right there and i can't imagine how frustrating it would be to have your kids doing like just now when he's messing with the microphones and i'm wanting so badly to tell him to sit down <laughs> does like, it work do now? at what age do they start listening 18 19 i'll let you know when we get there <laughs> okay so it's a little ways off. my my eight-year-old is starting to finally get over the tantrum throwing phase really he's i 
my little boy is he's so charming and so like if you will be the judge of that i know (laughs) if you ever meet him but see it's he's more charming to other people (laughs) than than to mom i have met him he's a sweetheart he is he's he's so fun and full of life and i love him dearly and because he's so fun and full of life he's extreme on everything he does so it it is one of those things so i've never had kids but I was talking to an ex the other day, and her two daughters lived with us, and they were six and eight when they moved in, and getting a phone call from them is one of my joys in Mm -hmm. life. It really is. And her older daughter is moving up here to to go to school up here, and truly makes me happy. And, And so I know, as someone who's never had kids, I'm jealous of you guys, because the happiness you get, now it probably way outweighed by the... Well, you can become Uncle Trip. <laughs> I will. My, and my kids are older, so actually you would probably have a blast with them because they can do, like, anything now. Well, your son, we were playing catch with the football, and we had three great catches, three great throws, and then he got bored. Oh, yeah. He, his attention. And I got, I got excited. I was ready to have him <laughs> run pass routes and go up against defenders and, and oh, work, yeah. send him to football camp. But we'll, we'll worry about it in the future. He definitely needs little bursts of things to do. So how long is the attention span for a three-year-old? Minute or two. <laughs> he's he well. It depends on the activity. Like he's playing right now on this little preschool app oh, that we have I, for I'm him. I'm going to ask you a quick question. How much device time is okay? Because I know a lot of my friends use devices to parent their kids. It that's 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 where I think the big like divide is is if the device is the parent because what we do with him and right now obviously he's got it to keep him entertained while we're doing this but he's doing quantum physics on it right now oh yeah it's <laughs> he's a smart kid. so many numbers and letters that are supposed to be numbers but we don't know them yet he's very smart yeah. okay. algebra <laughs> calculus all of it <laughs> um but he he likes to do those things, but I try to make sure that they're at least educational and a lot of the games are something I can walk through with him. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with letting your kid use a device as long as it's not the only thing they do. But in a car, I think it makes a lot of sense. We're going on a road trip next week and he is going to be on that thing the entire time yep. or I'm yep. going to go insane. You know, I actually, <laughs> so when devices in cars first came out, I was like, like airbags. Oh no! <laughs> no, <okay. laughs> no, screen time for cars. Okay. I was so annoyed, and I was like, I can't believe this. Like, it totally takes the joy out of a, a road trip. But I love road trips, and I've always loved road trips. And I would go with my grandparents when I was, you know, eleven and twelve and stuff. And like, we would have the best time. And there was no screens back then. Like, you didn't do that. You and so I was like, I'm gonna teach my kids how to like road trip and have fun. And then I was like. With movies. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there it, 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 it changes everything. Yeah. Well, and no. So Chris, over yeah. here, was a fully functioning man and then bought a minivan two months ago. <laughs> and we gave him a bunch of garbage, but with four kids, a minivan, it's easy entry, yeah. and they have... And they're so comfortable. The screens I on would the never back. get one, but... <laughs> I only... <laughs> you have pride <laughs> there's nothing wrong with minivans <laughs> nothing that... i mean you have to watch an arnold schwarzenegger film festival just to get your machismo back i mean because i mean really chris how is it driving a minivan it's actually really nice <laughs> Hey, I my want mom to... had a minivan, and oh, by the it way. was so spacey. Oh, I said you asked for bios on all of us, and I know, and, and I sent you one. Did send me one. Send well, me I one. sent one on Chris. Chris was a stud, and then he bought a minivan. Oh yeah, you did say that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't put that on the website, Chris. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> I we'll actually we're gonna segue because we're talking about kids, and I actually want to give a shout out to Lisa too while we're on our show because. I run my Rainy Days Foundation, helping the heart kids, and actually one of the things that got us to be who we were is I would write these stories and Lisa would draw them as a superhero. And I'm actually um, going to send some too so we can see them as well while we're, we're talking about this because they're <laughs> what so What do you think cute. of this one up here? I think it's amazing. 
she likes uh, her work. Uh, no. <laughs> I don't know which one's up there right now, but I'm sure I just enjoy go with doing it. it. <laughs> yeah, just go with it. No, it's so, and they're so awesome. And the moms and the kids just absolutely love it. And one of the really cool things is that, so one of my favorite stories is that I was doing all these heart stories and Lisa was just pumping out these these pictures for me like she can it's amazing she's amazing seriously um but one of the little boys the first little boy that i had in my uh, rainy days foundation as a heart kid he got his heart transplant and he was he swore that it was batman that got him his heart batman went out and found him his heart and brought it back to him and i'm telling lisa the story and she draws this picture of Trey, the little boy, whose mom is going to be on our show in a few weeks, but oh, um, he he was getting his heart from from Batman, and when I gave him this picture, he was just like so excited <laughs> and so happy, and that's I mean Lisa is doing such good work. She does amazing artwork anyway, but the little things that she does and just to bring happiness how, how to these Trey? kids. Trey is going to be eight, so and he's and he's a brand new heart. Mm -hmm. Same same age as my little boy, which is how we really got to know this family because her daughter, his sister, is also my Danny's age. So we're like besties now, which is awesome. But like and and they now love Lisa. And so every time <laughs> they need something, Lisa, Lisa's who we call. <laughs> well, I, I enjoy doing it. I, I that's that's one thing that I, I like being an artist for is because I can make. Like, I'll do little sketches for kids and stuff at conventions or art shows, and just, they love it. And mm -hmm. so that's that's probably one of, like, my favorite things. Yeah. Because, I mean, as cool as it is to be a lawyer or something, I don't get to go to a kid and be like, hey, I can work your case for you. <laughs> <laughs> and have them be like, oh, yes, I, I wanted to sue somebody. <laughs> but if I give them a drawing of themselves as a superhero, they're so excited. And I, I yeah, I, yeah, I like doing it for that reason. Mm-hmm. Well, we don't want to defame lawyers. There are a lot of very creative, nice lawyers out there. There's seven. Please don't sue me <laughs> for bad-talking lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're horrible people. They really are. I know a couple of good lawyers out there. You know, it's funny. Lawyers, everyone says lawyers really are horrible people, but my lawyer is really good. <laughs> and everyone says that, so every lawyer eventually. I know three really, really nice lawyers. Really? But they don't practice it full time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Depends on what they're practicing too. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Well, how do people get a hold of you if you want to? Do you like do freelance projects for companies and that sort of thing? Um, I do. Uh, I'm working on a pretty big project right now. Um, so. Is that the I, picture of Shalise and I? It's <laughs> it's huge. It's going to be. You know, the airport's looking for murals right now. So I was hoping to submit it to them to. <laughs> Put along right. the side of the awesome advertising moving elevator. That would be. Can you imagine people getting <laughs> oh off the gosh. plane and seeing that mural and then turning around and walking the wrong way on the moving sidewalk? <laughs> Go back home. Back <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Salt Lake City. <laughs> I think... The mural capital of the West. Did you get any artwork into the new Salt Lake Airport? Oh no, no, Did no, you no. Put in for that. I I had a lot of people suggest it to me. I am not much of a mural artist. I do mostly digital digital work, so it wasn't something that I felt I would you'd win at. Yeah, not not even that too. I I it has to be something I'd be really like focused on. I don't think that I'd be able to put the love into it that an actual mural artist might be able to. Because that is a heck of an opportunity. So a lot of great yeah. artists are going to get a chance to have their stuff seen by millions of people, which. Ultimately, that's what you do art for. Oh, well, yeah. you do art to make you feel good. but <laughs> Yeah, and as much as the money from a mural in the airport would be nice, I don't think that... I don't. I don't think that I would be able to do a, a good enough job on it. Because well, she I, would. She's, well, <laughs> there's a difference between totally painting would. something small on a on a like normal Can't size piece of paper <laughs> yeah. and then having to reimagine it in that's true. large that's, yeah. scale. And I, I sometimes get bored on the little pieces of paper. I can't imagine halfway through a mural. That's why she can pump them out so quickly. <laughs> She's like, I'm going to get bored soon. i got to hurry and get this done. <laughs> yeah, it's it's true. I have a very short attention span. So I, I, I wonder where I've your worked. son gets it from. I know. Yeah. <laughs> the old acorn didn't fall far from the tree yeah. on that one, did it? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I try to. Yeah, I don't think that I don't think that a mural would be my thing. So what project are you working on now that you're so excited about? 
Um, well, it's taking up a lot of time. I am working with a few other artists on... Um, well, I should preface this with saying that most of my work is entirely for nerds. <laughs> <laughs> like we do... I, I mostly freelance and draw, do like character design for like RPG games and people's personal characters that they make for like Dungeons and Dragons. Because I like doing fantasy art, and so it's perfect for me for people to give me a description of their, like, big hulking orc guy and drawing that. I know it sounds crazy, <laughs> but I like it. <laughs> and she does a phenomenal job. <laughs> it's all fantasy. She has a website. Lord of the we Rings. Should... Yeah, let's... well, I mean, I've heard of Lord of the Rings, <laughs> and, and my wife and the nieces or nephews are all down at Harry Potter World. Oh, yeah, see? So that's Stuff a little like nerdy. That. And the, the, the one that I'm working on right now is we, uh, I, there was I, a big... I actually drove by Comic-Con one time. Oh, did you? Did you see some people in large costume? <laughs> I, I, no, I've been to a couple Comic-Cons. Yeah? And the cool thing that Dan Farr and his partner have done is they have created something that makes people truly happy. So those three days in Salt Lake are pretty... And it used to be when they had the oh, Salt yeah. Lake Comic-Con, now they just have Fan X, but... Those are, mm-hmm. people are pretty darn happy for three days. Oh, yeah. We, that's actually uh, where we're headed next week. We've got a convention in Chicago because we sell stuff at, at Comic Cons. Oh, really? So you're going to drive all, you're going to take him to Chicago? Oh, it is a long drive, but <laughs> I would right, fly, I but we've got your, inventory to come. Your project. Oh, oh yes. yes. And I interrupted you. you totally <laughs> did. That was really rude, Trip. That's okay. I forgive you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll still paint your mural in the airport. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, it was a we launched a Kickstarter for it's a it's a portrait maker, so it's kind of like a character creator. Uh, we're drawing tons cool. of different individual little assets, and um, then people can build their own character with it, like for use in games, the uh, for writers to use in books as like references for their characters. Are you going like to be that. rich? I will be able to pay my rent. Wow. She's gay. Rich. She's renting out the Salt Lake Airport. The, the, they did a Kickstarter for it that went very well, but there's a there's a team of people working on it. So, really, so the Kickstarter was successful. Yeah, it just finished uh, not too long ago, and so we've been diving in. I drew about sixty different weapons that you can add to your portraits. Last week, that's why your logo took so long. It's <laughs> <That's> okay. <laughs> We've been doing good that. Timing. It's uh, and then we're doing the conventions as well. My husband and I have a website where we, uh, we make mugs like these. These mugs. Yep, she made these mugs. And uh, and she gets one as a gift. Oh, I oh, get wow. to take one home. <laughs> <laughs> one of my mugs. <laughs> but we're do that's uh, what we sell at the conventions are mugs and T-shirts with some of our designs on it. So. That's very cool. So you're you. making kind of a side hustle doing all this, and you get to meet some great people around the country. Yeah, we, uh, we've we been steadily growing it since I quit IHG, and we're finally to the point where I'm making more than there. So it's and actually starting to pay off, and we'll keep going. That's awesome. So. That's awesome. God bless. <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank you. And what is your website? Level1gamers.com. It's the number one. Level1 number one gamers.com all right okay for well, nerds we for nerds <laughs> let's review what we've talked about today that men are necessity necessity for some strange reason for, for valentine's some... day is terrible valentine's day should be wiped <laughs> off if i were president that would be my one thing the... elizabeth warren has actually talked about health or child care, care mm-hmm. which is cool bernie is very shrill so is she <laughs> none of the democrats inspire me at all I think yeah. we're at a weird stage in political. Yeah, and Trump talk. will be pardoning the Rock outside the studio. So, <laughs> <laughs> and we talked about kids, and we talked about Lisa's amazingness. Yep, and, and we had a guest star. And we had a guest star. We. And I think that Say at hi. this point, hi. Hi there. our Tuesday coffee talk can, <laughs> on, Thursday. on Thursday can come to an end. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We really Thank appreciate you. it. We'll All see right. you next time. Bye.